good morning, Jesus. Bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I say yes, Lord. I say yes. God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for a safe place that we can run to. Thank you for a safe place, God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our shadow, God. Thank you that we can find safety under your wings, oh God. Thank you this morning, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We say yes to your will, God. To your way, God. In the name of Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Yashaba Siki We surrender, God. Yes to your will and yes to your way. I say yes, Lord. Glory to the Lord. Glory to the Lamb. Good morning, Sam. We surrender, Lord. Hallelujah. I say yes. thank you we thank you we thank you we thank you God for a choice this morning we thank you God that we find our place in you we find safety in you this morning God we love you this morning there's none like you Lord we say yes to you God yes to your will yes to your way God we just want Jesus this morning hallelujah you can have this whole world just Give us Jesus. Give me Jesus this morning, God. Jesus for my peace. Jesus for my family. Jesus for my friends, God. Hallelujah in the name of Jesus. Jesus, Lord. Jesus over our homes. Jesus over our, our uh, opportunities and our open doors, God. Jesus, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Jesus, God, over that person trying to decide if they should stay with this job or go with another job, God. Jesus, Jesus, we need your direction this morning. We need your guiding hand this morning. We need you to be the lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. God, we thank you for you this morning. We thank you for our Savior, our Lord, our God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. You are our keeper. You are the lover of our souls, oh God. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah. Bless your name this morning. Thank you, O oh God. You promised, Lord, that if we put our trust in you, we would not be forsaken. We would not be forgotten, O oh God. We would not be put to shame. So, Lord, we put our trust in you this morning. No other help do we know. No other help. No other help. No other help do I know in the name of Jesus. Give us Jesus this morning. God, we come after you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like the dew in the morning, oh God. We're up, God, seeking your face, oh God, for direction, God. Hallelujah, God. For supernatural debt cancellation, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. I pray it over your people, oh God. God, I know that you have the ability, you are willing and you can, oh God, to supernaturally cancel debt, oh God. To supernaturally answer prayers, oh God. To do the miracle this morning, God. To reconcile relationships, God, that are your will, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Marriages, oh God. Mothers and daughters and sons and fathers, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Siblings, Lord. In the name of Jesus, God. We look to you this morning. Hallelujah, God. You're able to send the love, God. The God kind of love to that single woman, God, to that single man, oh God. You're able to do it, oh God. We believe this morning that you can. Hallelujah, that you will, oh God. Hallelujah, oh God, that we know that you're able. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you, God, for being the a window opener, God, because we bring in our tithes and offerings, and you have promised, God, to open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. Oh God, we await. We await what you have for us, oh God. 
Hallelujah, God. We stand under our open heaven and our open window and we say, God, pour out on us this morning. Pour out your Holy Spirit, oh God. Hallelujah. Pour out your answer, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Pour out the answer, oh God, oh God, oh God. We need strategy for this and strategy for that, oh God. We await your direction this morning, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Bless your name, God. You are worthy. Ha! None like you, Daddy. None like you. None like you, God. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Holy, holy God. Precious, precious God. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, God, that that opportunity is ours, oh God. We thank you, God, that this factual door, God, this fervent door, God, this opportunity, God, that is being opened to your sons and daughters, oh God, they will walk through it, oh God. They will find favor at the table, oh God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, God, the deal will be right, God, in the name of Jesus, God. We thank you for healing this morning, healing our bodies, God, healing our minds and healing our hearts, God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God. I lift up Sister Jones, oh God. I lift up Sister Bateman, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God. Jordan, in the name of Jesus, healed, oh God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Rachel, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we lift them up to you, oh God. Hallelujah, in the infirmity in my body, in those who are under the sounds of my voices, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, those under the sound of my voice, oh God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray healing over their body, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Women with fibroid issues, God. In the inability to birth a child, oh God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, we speak and command healing to their body. We speak to prostate cancer and we tell it to go in the name of Jesus. Breast cancer, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Liver cancer, oh God. Stomach cancer, oh God. Lung cancer, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we appropriate the blood, God, over every form of cancer, God. I lift up Lee this morning in the name name of Jesus, God. You are able to heal. You are able to restore, oh God. Those women that are pregnant, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we say that they will have a healthy babies, oh God. And no sickness or disease on this side of the womb, oh God, will attach to those children, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you that our desire is for you, O oh God. And we bless your name this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name. God, we thank you. Good morning, beloved of God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I thank you all so much for being up with me. Hallelujah. At the fourth watch. Hallelujah. I thank you for uh, taking your time out this morning. You could have still been in bed. You might be still be in bed. But we say amen. Amen. And we thank you this morning. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. What I wanted to talk to us about and share with you all this morning, I heard this song. And um, she said... And I thought I had put it on my computer. Yeah, I did. She said, our best yes. Our best, how does she say it, Holy Spirit? You know I got to remember it, Lord. But she was talking about us saying our yes. And our best yes is really <laughs> the most vulnerable weakest yes that we can give and I really started thinking about that I started thinking about that good morning sister Lynette I started thinking about that and as I considered that statement I was I was just saying God where where is that what, what are you saying 
What are you saying that our best yes, our, our I want to I want to quote it correctly, our, because I posted it yesterday, our very best is our weakest, most vulnerable yes. Our very best is often our most vulnerable and weakest yes. Well, what is what does that mean? What does that mean, Minister Tate? What what does that mean? And as I just started reading the word, I, I was just, I was being blessed by 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we know that the word says in chapter 12, and I'm going to read it from, I think I want to do the message and God's word. Maybe amplify. It said, because of the surpassing greatness and extraordinary nature of revelations, this is the Amplified, which I received from God. He said, for this reason, to keep me from thinking more of myself. He says, a thorn was given to me, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to harass me, to keep me from being exalted in myself. Verse 8, concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that I might leave, that it might leave me, this thorn. That was in our flesh. But he said, my grace is sufficient to you. My ever loving kindness. And my mercy is more than enough for you. It's always available to you. Regardless of the situation. For my power is being perfected. And is completely. And is complete. And shows itself most effectively when you are weak. I'm going to read that again. My grace is sufficient for you, Tuesday, Callie, Michael, Sheely, Sister Jordan, Hallelujah, Sister Sherlyn, Sands, Jaquita. My, my mercy, my grace. My loving kindness and mercy is more than enough for you, Tuesday. It is always available to you. Regardless of the situation, no matter what you're going through, God's grace is available to you. And it is more than enough. It's more than enough. It's more than you need. He's poured it out on you. And he wants you to be confident of that this morning. He wants you to be sure of that this morning he says my power God's power is made perfect and complete and shows itself more effectively when we are weak God shows up mightily when we're weak so this even kind of dispels this thing where we feel we have to always be strong we got to always, we can't show our emotions. We can't be vulnerable. And I know, I know that there are people who will try to take advantage of your weakness, but we're not talking about them. In the presence of God, you need to just let it all hang out. Just be broken. Just be weak. Just give it on up to him and say, God, I need you. If I never needed you before, I need you now. I need you to step into my situation. I need you to show up. I need you to answer my prayer. Because I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to run this business. I don't know how to raise these children by myself or with my husband. I don't know how to run my household. I don't know how to be a father. I don't know how to be a husband. I don't know how to be a mother. I don't know how to be a wife. Whatever it is. I don't know how to be a minister. I don't know how to walk by faith and not by sight. I'm used to having things tangible before me. God, what is it that you would have for me to do? How do I do this? You don't have to be strong. You know, I, I do this training called DISC. It's a personality assessment and been certified as a behavior consultant and my what there's there's a, it's D I S C dominant dominant direct I is um, more of the um, uh, class clown the the one that's always engaging with people um, 
the S is sanguine, very secure, lay, you know, kind of laid back, just wants to make sure that everybody is taken care of. And then C is controlled and competent. In what I do, whether it was in corporate, when I was in corporate, and I would even say in ministry, and even maybe even in my family, the role that I tend to have taken on naturally is a DC. It's what people expect of me to be direct, to be dominant, to take control of a situation and make things happen and get things done. But who I really am is a CS. I'm competent, thank you Jesus, for my talents and gifts. I'm capable, I get things done, and I like to get things done right. And S is the one who's pretty much, okay, everybody got what they need. That's really what I, what I am and probably what I want to be. I don't want to be the D. But when things are not taken care of, I will step in and take care of them. If I see that a ball has been dropped. But because of that, there is a sense that you are always strong. I have said this before. I'm not always the one that people pray for. Now, yes, I am cautious about who I let pray for me. And you should be too. Amen. But, not, but people just readily or knowing besides maybe my family or my mom or someone I have good morning I have asked to pray for me but for people to just say hey sis I'm praying for you God just even if God hadn't put you on my heart but a lot put me on their hearts a lot of times when you're strong and you are walk you you just got to get things done because you got to get things done if you don't get it done it won't get done and because you operate in that vein People see you as strong, and that's good. But God said right here in 2 Corinthians, he is most effective when we're weak. He steps in with his grace and his mercy, his ever-loving, everlasting kindness. When Even if we don't want to show people that we have weaknesses, and you want to show that to the right person who won't take advantage of your weakness, I get it, I hear you. No, I can't show that to him. I can't show that to her. You know, I can't show that to the people in my office. No, no, you're the manager. You own the company. But there's a difference between being vulnerable and being weak. Vulnerability is saying I'm not always strong. I'm not, I don't always have the answers. I know that I'm not perfect. You might have the answer when I don't have the answer. Or I may have the answer, but right now I just don't have it in me to give it out. God's word says, Jesus says, when you're weak, God steps in and he becomes strong for you. So your, your best is always your weakest yes. It's always your most vulnerable yes. God needs you to be willing to say, Lord, I need you this morning. I need you to answer this. I need you to answer that. I need you to, to come and stand in the gap for me concerning this God. I feel like I'm alone. I don't know where my help is coming from except from you. I need an answer. Hallelujah. By the end of the day, God, I've been in this place of, of sickness, disease, infirmity for how many years? For how long? How long have you had your issue? The woman with the issue of blood? 12 years was her issue. How long has yours been? How long have you been in your struggle of wanting to be free of this or free of that? Whether it's free of, of drug use or addiction of any kind. Whether it's free from that abusive relationship. Whether it's freedom from debt. Whatever it is. God, I know that you are the only one that can heal me. I know that you are the only one that can set me free. I know that you are the only one that can bring me out. God, step in. He said when we're weak, when we're weak, we're made strong in him. He stands up in you. Hallelujah. You got Jesus. He stands up in you. The Holy Spirit will stand up in you and give you strength. Hallelujah, God, I speak strength to your people. I speak strength to everyone under the sound of my voice at fourth watch prayer, oh God. 
I speak blessings over their lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus, for their diligence, their commitment, God, to even be on this on this uh, prayer call and power, power teaching this morning. God, I speak blessings over them. I ask that you pursue them and overtake them with a sudden blessing, God, in the name of Jesus. Fall upon them, God, in the name of Jesus. Greater, 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 greater is he that is within you than anything that is in this world. Glory to God. Greater is he that is within you than anything that is in this world, oh God. God, stand up in them. Hallelujah. Give them their strength back. Give them their boldness back. They know if they don't know, I'm coming to tell them their help comes from you this morning. When we're weak, we're made strong in you. Hallelujah, oh God. Our weakest, our weakest place, oh God, can be our best yes. When we're weak, we're made strong. And our yes to you can become the most powerful thing that we have in that time of weakness. Glory to God. Glory to God. He goes on to say, therefore, Paul says, I will boast in my weaknesses. He says in one translation, I will boast in my infirmities. I will boast so that the power of God can live in me. Hallelujah. I'll boast in that. I'm weak. I don't know how to do that. I don't know the answer to this. I don't know why that problem that came on me, on my marriage, on my family, on my finances. I don't know why that came. I don't know why you lost your job. I don't know why I lost my job. I don't know why that boss is tripping. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know why that opportunity hasn't come to me yet. I don't know. I don't know why you're still single. I don't know. I don't know why he wants a divorce or why she wants a divorce. Talking about I got to go find myself. The devil is a lie. Yourself is right there. And if you let God, he'll stand up in you. Hallelujah. He'll show himself strong in you. Hallelujah. Because his power is in you. Glory to God. Irreconcilable differences. Where does that come from as Christians when he's given us the ministry of reconciliation? That don't even make sense. We just can't seem to reconcile. No, you just prideful. Yeah, you just want stuff your way. That's what it is. Yeah, you, you haven't forgiven. And I know partly because they keep doing stuff that makes it difficult for you to forgive. But you, you ask God to stand up in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ask God to give you the strength. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. He says, he says in the message translation, you know, he says it like this. He said, first, I didn't think this, this thing, uh, he said, uh, I didn't think this thing was a gift. This, he said, you know, I was, it was given unto me a thorn in my flesh to buffet me so that I won't become puffed up. And the Message Bible says, uh, now I didn't think this was a gift. I begged God, take this thing away. Take this away. Don't nobody want this. Don't nobody want this to happen and then that to happen and then that to happen. My sister, oh, when someone passes away, particularly someone famous, she always says, oh, who's going to be next? Because these things happen in threes, right? Well, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. So people always say things like, if it ain't one thing, it's another. You need to stop saying stuff like that. You you make it, you give the devil room so that you can boast in your infirmities, so you can boast in your challenges, so you can boast in, in the things that are coming against you. Stop saying stuff. Watch your mouth, man. Sister, you saying if it ain't one thing, it's another, then that's what's happening. How about saying, man, I, I, every time I look around, I'm being blessed. Woo! This blessing, that blessing, favor here, favor there, open door here, open door there. Hallelujah. Opportunity here. Opportunity there. All my prayers are answered. Good God Almighty. To the glory of God. To my favor. That's how you need to talk. But I get it. Paul said, hey, you in it? You better boast in it. You got an infirmity. You got a struggle. You got a weakness. You got a challenge. Paul said, okay, well, I'm going to boast in it. He said, I'm going to boast in it because I can because I'm going to give it to God. That's what he said. I'm going to give it to God. He said, I'm going to keep giving it to Jesus. He said, he said, no danger than walking around high and mighty. This is in the, the Message Bible. To think that, you know, these things aren't going to come up on me. 
that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying to you when you are speaking well of yourself is you saying what God says. But if you are facing a challenge, if you are facing a struggle, if you need an answer from God because there is sickness or disease or infirmity in your body, he said, no need of being, uh, uh, you know, puffed up. Don't, don't be high and mighty. He said, you know, because anything can come up on you at any moment. Anything can come up on you at any moment. That's why you plead the blood over you. Anything can try to come up on you at any moment. He said, he said, so in this, my strength comes into its own. Hallelujah. That's good right there. The message Bible says my strength, God's strength comes into its own. It, his strength in you is going to look different than in his strength in me. It's got its own identity. It's going to come into its own and it's going to stand up in me different than how it's going to stand up in Q. It's going to stand up in me different than how it'll stand up in Lynette. Glory to God. He said, but in that, he said, I'm going to be made strong. Because God is going to step into my situation because of how I made, how he created me. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Some people can take it a little more than other people can. He said he'll put no more on you than you can bear. I know you're saying I can't take this no more. I'm done with this. I don't mm -mm, take this thing back, Jesus. But sometimes our very best, sometimes our very best will be our weakest, most vulnerable, most powerful, broken yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's okay to be weak in Jesus. It's okay to fall to your knees. It's okay to pull over to the side of the road or into the parking lot and say, Lord, I need your help. I need you to move this mountain. I know you said if I had the faith of a mustard seed. Hallelujah. I know you said I can speak to this thing and it can, it'll move. But God, I'm not seeing it. It's moving. I need you to do it. I say yes to your will. I say yes to your way. If I got to go this way, I must need go through. Jesus said, if I must need go through this, I say yes, Lord. And I boast in what you allow me to come, go into, go through, and come out of. Glory to God. I boast in it because I know that you're with me. I know that you'll never leave me. I know that you'll never forsake me. I said that to you guys a couple of weeks ago. First, let me say this. I apologize for last week. I had drove out of town, drove back, got back extremely late Monday night and was knocked out. Okay? And so I think I woke up at like 10 o'clock on Tuesday. So please forgive me. Last week. So here we are boasting, boasting. He said, once I heard, th this is the message Bible. The, this, is how, this is how he wrote it. He said, wait a minute now. Once I heard that God's strength comes into its own and it's perfected in me concerning my weaknesses, not concerning somebody else's weakness. He said, wait, wait, wait. Once I heard that, he said, I got glad. And I said, bring it on. <laughs> he let it happen. Whatever it, it was, whatever this thing is. That's what he said. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something. There's a couple of scriptures back in the day. I won't even say when I first got saved. Because it couldn't have been because I was only 13 or 14. I will say in ministry, after accepting my call to ministry and studying the word, this is a scripture I would not pray. Tell the truth, shame the devil. I wouldn't pray. I wouldn't pray the scripture. You know, I wouldn't pray it. I wouldn't pray this because I wasn't trying to boast in my infirmities because I didn't want none. I ain't trying to boast in my struggles because I ain't want none. But the truth is, they came anyway. <laughs> they came anyway. Graves' disease came to make me lose my mind. In the name of Jesus. It did. It tried. Yes, it did. Infirmities, weaknesses, struggles. The struggle came. The struggle came through the bloodline. So whether I wanted it or not, it was there. So you can, you know... You can say you don't want it all you want. You're not going to pray. You're not, gonna, you're not even going to study that scripture. You, you're not even going to look at that. 
oh, okay, well, let me help you. <laughs> I'm going to bring it on. So this is how the message Bible says. He said, oh, wait a minute, I got glad. He said, I quit focusing on my handicaps. This is the message Bible. I quit focusing on my weaknesses. I stopped focusing on what I had or what I didn't have. I stopped focusing on my strength. I stopped focusing on what I lacked or what hadn't came yet or what had, been hap what had not happened yet. He said, I decided I was going to appreciate the gift, this is this takes some this takes some faith right here. You ready? I decided to appreciate that's what it means to boast in my infirmities, to appreciate the struggles that I have. Because having them means that God is close by. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Having these means that God is close by. Now he gets closer. When we start calling on him, good God Almighty, that's good, Jesus. That's good. That's good for me. I'm just going to shout on that one for myself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The more I say, Jesus, come, the more I say, God, help, the more I say, Lord, I need you. Hallelujah, God. This thing right here has come to kill me. It's come to destroy me. It's come to take me off my post. It's It's come to knock me off my block, but God. Draw near. He says he draws near to the brokenhearted. He draws near to those who are of a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Those who are humble. Those who say, I need you. He draws near to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb this morning. Hallelujah. That's good news. Woo! He says, so now... I take my limitations in stride. I, I take it in stride. I, I say, well, it's coming. It's going to happen because God is here. He loves me. And he's concerned about me. And he's promised to perfect the things that concern me. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. Good morning, Robin. Hallelujah. It's coming. Glory to God. So I'm going to keep trusting God. He blessing her and he blessing him. He blessing this one. He blessing that one. He's in the neighborhood of blessings. Hallelujah. When people around you are getting blessed, getting promotions, getting houses, getting cars, getting married. Their wounds are being blessed. Hallelujah. All of these things, getting healing, getting miracles. Hallelujah. Having miraculous encounters with God. Supernatural things are happening. Doors are opening. When you have, hear somebody say that, you need to celebrate with them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I celebrate with those who blessings are falling upon them. We mourn with those who mourn. And we, we worship and praise God. Hallelujah. With those who are being blessed. Because that means he's in the neighborhood. Good morning, Brother Nick. He's in the neighborhood. See, this is why you shouldn't get jealous. And this is why you can't get jealous because if you are in the vicinity of someone else getting blessed and getting miracles shoot what let me take my glasses off what that means god is nearby he is he, he pouring them out hallelujah so you don't have to fret you don't have to worry hallelujah the way you came in is not the way you gotta leave glory to god how you woke up this morning, if you wasn't good, you wasn't feeling good, that ain't how you got to go about the rest of your day. You can claim your victory because in your weaknesses, he's made strong. In your weaknesses, you are made strong by his strength. In your weaknesses, you are made strong by his strength. You are made strong in your infirmities. You are made strong in your lack. You are made strong in your waiting. You are made strong in your singleness. You are made strong while you're waiting on God to heal you. Ah. I went to an education conference. Uh, as I said, I had drove back. And the gentleman who asked me to be a part of that conference. I, I sent in my proposal and uh, he and his team accepted me to speak and to train at this conference. It's an education conference, y'all. I'm telling you. I complained. Not really complained, Lord. Forgive me. That's not the word. I was challenged. Good morning, Rance. I was challenged and I was challenged because I knew that after I spoke and I trained on Monday, I would be tired. 
and I didn't want to have to drive back by myself. So I had asked different people if they would ride with me. And the only purpose for them riding with me was for them to drive back or to drive part of the way back. So I went. It was an exceptional opportunity. God did it. I praised him all the way and we gave him glory. Well, the gentleman who had invited me uh, to come and that I was corresponding with, he, I did not meet him. I asked different people, is he there? Is he there? They were like, no, he's not here yet or he'll be here later. I said, okay. So I never met him. So I get an email last night. In my weakness, in my infirmity, in my complaining or my feeling like I was going to be so exhausted and I was, I was, and I hate driving at night. And the, they're doing a lot of construction on 65 uh, going south. And there are places that the semis literally were taking over both lanes. And so at night, trying to drive in that, they was not trying to let me pass. But at a point, I was like, if I got to do 100 to get past these, I'm going to do 100. So I get back. I'm in, I, send, I send him an email just letting him know uh, the outcome of my workshop and what the evaluation says. And um, he sends me an email. And his email says to me, this is why God's strength will stand up in you to do something. Because I wanted to cancel and not go. Because I know that sounds crazy, but I was like, oh man, I just know how I'm going to feel coming back. So I was willing to pass up the opportunity. And I don't know if you can see my shirt. No opportunities missed. No missed opportunities. That's how I'm living life. So when I got there and I saw this t-shirt at Bishop Walker's church, I said, oh yeah, I'm getting this. When I opened my emails last night, he had sent me an email at about nine something in the evening. And he said, I heard about your workshop. He said, at, at, at an education conference. He said, I heard about your workshop and how exceptional it was. He said, I want to apologize to you that I wasn't there. He said, but the day before the conference, Friday, he said, I received a call that I have terminal cancer. Y'all, I got so mad. I got so mad. I first I repented for tripping about having to go by myself or whatever. And I got so angry at the devil. Because your weakest yes, your most vulnerable yes, is the most powerful one you will give. And now I don't know this man from Adam, Steve. Nobody. I don't know him from nobody. I never met him. But at that moment, I said, I'm praying for you. And I'm praying for your supernatural, the strength of God, the power of God stood up in me for a stranger. Because you have to recognize that every time he tries to get you to say no, every time he wants you to stop and say, I'm not going to try no more. Every time he says, I, he wants you to say, I give up, I quit. It's because there is somebody that needs you. And he wasn't even there. And he said, I so regret not meeting you. He said, someone told me you had a book that I need to get. And, and in that book, and I said, okay, well, because I had both books. I had, I tasted my tears and I had waiting. And I said, okay. I said, I'm sure they're talking about waiting. Because he's waiting on his healing now. He's waiting on this. You don't know what I, you going to this is really about that. Good God Almighty. Yeah, I made some good connections, some other opportunities to do training and speaking engagements. That's altogether lovely. But I absolutely know that me going to that was for him. It wasn't just for those opportunities. Because now there is a prayer. For that brother. As a matter of fact, his name is Lee. 
So when you, you in prayer, just remember, right now, just lift up Lee. And ask God for supernatural healing, to touch his body. We need a miracle in the name of Jesus. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle that the testimony is God did it. I don't even know what his faith is. But if you ask it for my book, Waiting, which is riddled with scripture, you about be a Christian. And if not, you want after you look at it, after you read it. Glory to God. In your weakness, God is made strong. He takes over. He rises up in you to do things that you've never done, to do things that you feel like you can't do. He goes on to say, so I take my limitations, my infirmities, the things I want to complain about, the things I've been crying about. I'm not saying you shouldn't cry. But he said, I take them in stride now. He said, I take them in good cheer. He said, every abuse, every accusation, every accident, every bad break, Every opposition, every struggle, every test, every trial, I take it all in stride now. Because I know God is with me in the midst of all of that. I know he's not only with me, he's for me and he's in me. Glory to God. He's with me, he's for me, and he's in me. That should be good news to somebody. Glory to God. He's with you. Hallelujah. He's in you and he's for you. He doesn't want you to fail. That's not who God is. Glory to God. He came that you would have life and have it more abundantly. He said, above all, I wish that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. I wish I prosper, prosper. That first prosper literally means I wish that you all would be well with you. Shalom. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in your life. Above all, he said his grace is sufficient. Glory to God. So he said that you would, above all, have all things at all times to meet all needs. This is the God you serve. So you can boast in your infirmities. How do you boast in losing a parent? How do you boast in losing a child? I, I don't, I, Lord have mercy. How do you boast in your marriage ending and you didn't want that divorce? How do you, how do you boast in, in a spouse passing away? How do, you, how do you boast in those things? It's not so much that you're boasting in that, you start to boast in God. Boast in God, that God loves you, that God's with you. God is for you. God is in you. He's not going to leave you. He hasn't left you. And he's not going to forsake you. He's not going to forget about you. Your name is written in the palm of his hand. When that thing came against you, how do you boast in your house flooding out or your house being burned down in a fire? How do you boast in that? You, you can't, it's, not, it's not that you're boasting in that thing. You're boasting in God. You're boasting in God. That God is good. God is awesome. God is amazing. God is wonderful. God is my keeper. God is my protector. God is my, I know, but he didn't protect me from this, but he's protecting you now that you ain't lost your mind. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God is my protector because he blocked me from this and he blocked me from that. Oh, all the stuff that should have happened, that could have happened, that the enemy wanted you to get entangled in and get entrapped in and fall over into a ditch or a pit or a pit in. But God kept you. He's a keeper. He's a provider. I know you lost your job, but I boast in the fact that God is a provider. I know that there's sickness and infirmity in your body, but I boast in the fact that God is a healer. Hallelujah. Good God Almighty. I boast in the fact that though I'm alone right now, that there's no person in my life that I'm spending time with, have co companionship with. I boast in the fact that God is my husband man, and that is for men and women. Until he sends your spouse. I boast that I'm never alone. Hallelujah. When I feel like I'm alone, he's Jehovah Tiskanu. He's always there. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. You got to boast in the Lord. Boast in him today. I know you're saying, shoot, I only got $3.48 in the bank. But I boast in the Lord that it is him who gives me power to gain wealth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
He gives me abundance so that I have more than enough left over to be a blessing to somebody else. Glory to God. I boast in God this morning. Hallelujah. When I'm weak, he stands up in me and gives me strength. Good God Almighty. Hallelujah. He said, so just like that, I just let it go. This is what he says. He says, so so he said, wait a minute, when I heard about this, when I when I heard I ain't gotta be tripping on this, he said, I just decided, hey, hey, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna brag on God. I'm gonna brag on the power of God. I'm gonna brag on what he what he's able to do. Matter of fact, I'm gonna reflect on what he's already done. How many times he did this and how many times he did that. He said, he says, so when hardship comes and people mistreat me and people mis disrespect me and, and people try to talk about me and persecute me and difficulties come. He said, I know what I'm going to do because I'm suffering for Christ right now. He said, I know what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going to boast in God. He said, I'm going to boast in him. Hallelujah. Man, you know that they're closing our, our factory. You know that they're taking away our shift. For real. Well, then God getting ready to do something. Good God Almighty. I had a young lady tell me God had prophesied over her and her husband that about this time next year that they were going to have a child. And they, she said almost with, within days or a week of that or something like that, she started having challenges in her body. I said, the devil is a lie. I said, he heard. He heard what the Lord said. And, and he's heard what the Lord has said about all of y'all too. See, this is the thing. This is why I know it was the timing of God for me to call this prophetic training on, when is it? August 1st. August 1st here in Indianapolis. And if you haven't registered, you need to register. It's a workshop. I'm not taking a whole bunch of people because we are going to not only give personal prophecies, we are also going to activate you in your gift. We can't activate you in your office because you got to be called to your office. And I absolutely believe in order. And if you are a part of a church assembly where they believe in the prophets and they, they uh, release the prophets and they train the prophets and they equip the prophets, then it is your overseer who releases you to go. But to release your gift, to activate your gift, absolutely. Absolutely. Because you can use your gift in the grocery store. You can use it at church. You can use it. Uh, well, yeah. Okay. Amen. So that's why you need to be trained. But you need to understand when the prophetic word comes and is spoken over your life, the enemy steps up his game. You got to understand that. So how do you guard your prophetic word immediately? How do you guard that? How do you keep it alive? How do you still keep declaring it? I know we say declare and decree, decree and declare. Well, it's already been written, so I don't need to decree it. I just say it's been written. So what I do, I speak the word and I declare what the word has already said over my life. So you can boast in God. No matter what is going on in your life, you can boast in God. They gave that raise. They gave that position to somebody else. Oh, well, that means something better coming. That relationship ended. Oh, then that means something better is coming. More better, more better, more better, baby. That's where you got to get in your mind and your thinking. This is why you can boast in these things that come against you. He says so. He says so. Well, now that I know it's done. <laughs> now that I know it's done. God did it. Right now, I'm, I'm waiting on actively waiting. Everybody actively waiting. I am actively waiting on God to bring to open this door uh got an email from someone and i'm waiting on god to open this door and all i all i'm gonna say is it's done good morning sister mitchell all i'm gonna say it's done it's done i've asked people to come into agreement and to pray a certain way don't don't pray listen let me let me just add this when you are praying in agreement with someone it is important that you not add your own words to the prayer Okay, all right, because the Bible says in um, Genesis about the Tower of Babel, he said when they were praying the same thing, the same way to the same God, he said nothing that they do would be impossible. Everything would be answered. Nothing that they do would be impossible. This is the law of agreement. It's just not that we agree. 
It's that we pray and we say the same thing about the same thing. I have seen it happen too many times. When God allowed me uh, for a season to be over, um, to, to oversee the intercessory prayer ministry at, at, at the time we were called Healing Streams, now we are the Streams Church. When God allowed me to be the overseer of that ministry, and if God gave me an instruction to give one of the intercessors to pray, that's what they pray. Don't add your own stuff. And that's what I taught. And we saw miracle after miracle after miracle God answering prayers consistently the way we prayed them to be answered. Dead free sold in Ample Space Worship Center. I'll never forget it. Somewhere along the line. See, this is the other thing. When you are praying something, you have to keep praying it until you get the full manifestation of it. And you don't come up off of it. That's the prophetic. You don't come up off of it just because you haven't seen it happen yet. And you don't stop praying because you've seen part of it. You don't stop declaring it because you've seen part of it. I remember when I was coming back from Uganda. In your strength, you're going to be made strong today. Because I'm giving you a tool. When I was on my way back from Uganda... And I was stuck in that traffic. And it was looking like I wasn't going to make that flight. And that taxi driver knew all the ways to get uh, across that, that city. Back alleys and, and alleys that had holes in it that you could fall into and get lost. And he was hitting them and driving over them trying to get me to that airport. And so I, I just happened... Even though we had our little piece of equipment to, to get Wi-Fi wherever we were, sometimes it wasn't working. And I, I'll never forget that trip. I'm grateful for that assignment that uh, Apostle Desmond uh, allowed me to go on with her, invited me to go on with her, and how God miraculously, literally raised the money for me to go. Good God Almighty. It was just amazing. But as we were praying, and I was sending out the prayers and people would say, I prayed. I said, I don't need you to pray. I need you to keep praying until I hit American soil. I need the end of the matter that I get on the plane, I get my connecting flight, and I get home. And you know when you stop praying that God protector, God keeper, God bring her through safe is when you get a text message, an email, a Facebook that say, I made it home safely. That's when you stop praying. See, we, we as Christians, we stop before the assignment is done. In your weakness, you will be made strong. And so you can boast that God did it. Not God, you know, got her from uh, Uganda to New York, and then you get to New York and you get stuck. No, 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 no. Okay, yeah, you got married, but the one you got married to, Y'all came into a situation and there's no joy in your marriage. No, no, no. I want the end of the matter. Maybe you can't. You've got married. You waited and you waited the right way or maybe you didn't. But now you got married and you can't have intimacy with your spouse. No, you pray it through. No, God. When I, when Listen, I say this all the time. Y'all single people, y'all quit talking about take the desire away until you send my husband. The devil's a lie. You better say, take it away. You know, no, that's not what you say. Lord, take the desire away. I don't want to sin. I don't want to fall. No, you say, until you send my spouse, until you send my husband, until you send my wife, and then return it full Monty. Y'all play too much. I'm just saying. I'm here to help you. In your strength, you will be made perfectly strong. He says, so, so, so. He said, I'm ready now. He said, I'm ready now. I'm ready now to go on and do what the Lord has called me to do. Because now I understand. Now I know that God is with me. Now I understand that these sicknesses, infirmities, trials, tribulations, hallelujah. He said, and so I'm just going to patiently wait on the Lord to do it. I'm going to patiently wait on the Lord to answer my prayer because I boasted in you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, he said, you can ask whatever you want. He said, if, if, if your soul, your heart does not condemn you, he said, ask. Well, there can be no condemning of you when you're boasting in the Lord. 
Because he'll bring something to your remembrance. Why are you telling him he's wonderful? And he's awesome? And he's lovely? And he's kind? Oh my God, he'll bring something to your remembrance that immediately you can say, oh Lord, forgive me for that. Do I need to call them and tell them I'm sorry? Yes. And then he gives you your heart's desire. He comes in. There's a way to do this. That in your, in your weakness, you can be strong today. I call forth the strength of God in your life. I call forth the strength of God to be raised up in you, to stand up in you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We boast in our infirmities today because we boast in Jesus. We boast in the word of the Lord. We boast that God hears our prayers. We boast knowing that God loves us. He'll never leave us. He'll never forsake us. We boast this morning. We boast that he is a good God. Hallelujah. He's a good, good father. Yes, he is. We boast. We boast. Good morning, Robin. We boast in the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. We boast that we can celebrate that we coming out. Hallelujah. We can boast. Though we went in, he's going to bring us through. We boast. We boast in his goodness this morning. We boast. Though we lost that, we're going to gain much. We boast. Though the door isn't that door closed, this door is going to open. We boast. We boast that that, 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 uh, Lord Jesus, I was about to say something. We boast that that, that one right there wasn't the right one. Hallelujah. But we boast that the right one is going to come. Glory to God. We boast that that, that Jack, Hallelujah. Playing tricks for kids. We boast. We boast that they came playing with my heart, but the right one is going to come. Glory to God. And he going to do right by you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She going to do right by you. He going to do right by you. Glory to God. We boast. Yep. My company, somebody saying my company folded or my company didn't even get off the ground, but you're going to boast in God because now he's going to give you a for sure plan. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He's going to show you how to do it. You're going to sit and you're going to wait in his presence so that, so that God's strength can come into its own in you. Hallelujah. So that he can stand up in you and the strategy can be poured into you. The wisdom, the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. You ain't got to give up. These things come to test your faith. They come to test your faith and the enemy wants you to give up. But you got to remember, you must remember, hallelujah, your very best, your very best is often your weakest, most vulnerable, broken, yet strongest, yes. When you're weak, you're made strong in him. When you're weak, you're made strong in him. Don't be afraid. God, as he wants me to speak to fear. That sickness is not unto death in the name of Jesus. That sickness is not unto death. We speak healing to your body. Cancer, they say, is in remission. But the only remission is that of sin. Taken away, covered by the blood. Forgiven, never to return. Washing your, you, as far, washing you, cleansing you of all of that. Casting that sin as far as the east is from the west. Sickness and disease is not of God. It's not of God. It was given unto Paul. A messenger from Satan to buffet him. So that he would not become exalted. Puffed up in itself. So God will allow things to come to keep us humble. To keep us drawing near to him. To keep reminding us, you ain't such a much. You, you ain't all that now. So let me remind you that you got this struggle. You got that going on. But you keep coming to me saying, God, give me clean hands and a pure heart. Give me a soul that is not lifted up to vanity. Let my mind not be lifted up to vanity. My emotions, my will, that it's all about me. I will not have a narcissistic attitude. That don't even go with being a Christian. How you going to be a sociopath and be a Christian? Number 45. But anyway, I digress. So. Because we know that we are imperfect and the only perfect one is God. We're required, our very nature. Every day we got some forgives me coming out. We got something we got to repent for. But in your weakness, in your weakness, God, 
God wants to be made strong in you. He wants to stand up in you. He wants to show his power through you. He wants you to be that living testimony. He wants you to be a walking miracle. Glory to God. That's good news this morning. That's good news this morning. And I love him for it. Don't you love God? Hey, we, um, my pastor, uh, sang a song at church on Sunday. And I think I have went and found <laughs> everybody who sings this song. And, um, it blessed me so. I, I, I went, I literally, I think I went and probably found everybody who sings this song. And so I want to close us out in prayer as you hear this song. Amen. It's called Reckless Love. I posted it yesterday and I know it'll bless you. So God, we thank you. We thank you for your love today. We thank you for your love today. We couldn't have earned it. We don't deserve it. So you give yourself away. The overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Father, we thank you for your love today. We thank you for your joy today. We thank you for your peace today. We thank you for your strength today because we know it is by your strength. Hallelujah. Through your strength, we are made strong. We are made perfect. Stand up in your people this morning. Stand up in your people this morning. Answer their prayers, oh God. Be a comfort to them. Be their peace. Be their joy. Good God Almighty, we love you, God. I pray that you are blessed today. I pray that you're blessed. I pray that this word bless someone. Share it with someone. Tag someone. Let someone know today. It's okay to be weak. When we're Christians, we have God in us. And he stands up in us. And he gives us strength to run on and see the end. I bless God for you. The Lord says the same. We'll be together next Tuesday at 5 a.m. God bless you. Pray for me as I pray for you. Isn't that a beautiful song? The overwhelming love. Love, the reckless love of God. Oh my God. That doesn't mean that he don't know what he's doing. That just means he'll come in and tear stuff up just for you. Oh my God. He brings his light into dark places. He shuts the mouth of the adversary just for you. No battle, no mountain you won't climb up to come after me. No wall you won't kick down. No lie you won't tear down to come after me. Shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up to come after me. That's good news this morning. Wall you won't kick down. Lie you won't tear down to come after me. Oh my God. Thank you, Pastor Hill, for introducing me to that song. That's good news this morning. That's the love of God. That's the gospel. Amen. Thank you so much, Sister Lynette. I love you all. I love you all. I'm not going to keep you. It's 6 a.m. You have a blessed day. You're into the first watch. Hallelujah. <laughs> Well, no, not really. Not so much. I take that back. <laughs> I love you with the love of the Lord. I will see you next week. God bless you. Prophetic training, August 1st. Thank you for asking. Prophetic training, August 1st here in Indianapolis. Uh, look for the post. Uh, it'll be a one-day training from 9 to 3. Uh, or maybe 9 to 4. And that includes your lunch, okay? Because we're going to have a working, prophetic, activating lunch. I don't deserve it. Still, you give yourself away. 
the overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo, let me get off here. Okay, I love y'all. Bye.